This little adventure series is brought to you in part by Sojourn Overland, Yukapat Campers, the Alberta Outdoor Adventure Expo, and Fart Systems. Hey, what's going on, everybody? And I just want to say, uh, before this next video starts, thank you so much to everybody who's kind of come uh, on this weird experience and journey of mine over the last few years. Um, this video was a, a kind of a long, long time in the making, essentially. What happened was is... Uh, I applied for Dragon's Den shortly after I launched, I launched uh, our prototype uh, camper back in 2021 uh, at the AOA Expo. And, um, but we didn't have the information that we needed. We really didn't have that many sales. We had a couple of sales and we didn't have any data to kind of uh, to share with anybody. Uh, lo and behold, we did in fact get selected again for the second year in a row for Dragon's Den. Um, and we decided to take the opportunity. And overall, my experience with the show was uh, interesting. Um, er, going into Dragon's Den, Tyler and I did our enough research into it, knowing that nobody, none of the dragons were really in manufacturing. And that kind of influenced uh, the ask. That, that kind of influenced our ask. Um, as there wasn't much that they would be able to offer us in the form of strategy. Most of them are in tech, so they probably would have been able to offer some sort of marketing um, benefit, but we've got so many awesome people in our circle that I, I find that we would get more benefit from networking within our uh, existing uh, realm to find someone to fulfill that need. But as far as uh, how it went, I'm not able to actually let you guys know. I'm not able to disclose anything. CBC said, hey, can't, can't tell anybody under penalty of death by bludgeoning. Without loyal followers that love what we're doing for whatever reason i'm really close to this so it always just feels like work to me other than that guys that's the that, that, that's this is going to be the whole intro to this video we didn't end up filming as much because after i left camp um which is the previous video you just you may have just watched uh, i left camp and i basically just boogied it to hamilton uh to pick up tyler from the airport and then we got a hotel room and the next day we were at dragon's den so um so shout out to crave automotive and tanx campers and gear out of colorado uh, for supporting Yucapac Camper as a distributor. If you are uh, a store owner or a business owner and you're looking for a camper to fit your needs for your customers and you're finding that what's out there isn't working for you, send me an email and I'll help you guys out. All right, let's get into it, guys. Hi, my name's Dave, and I've spent most of my life outdoors here in Canada's western frontier. I believe one thing to be true. Outside is therapy. It's where we both reconnect and disconnect. I hope you'll come with me as we build, explore, and repeat. Just about. Oh yeah. Get in there. Today's coffee is brought to you in part by White Frog. White Frog is a, a local coffee company out of Sylvan Lake, Alberta. And uh, they make some pretty awesome fair trade coffee. <clears throat> Woo. So this marks our, uh, our last night in the camper traveling to Toronto tomorrow morning at 7 15 is our call time this has been a crazy kind of trip it's kind of been a surreal trip it hasn't really felt like anything on my way out except for well it's felt like driving to Toronto it's been an adventure nonetheless and it'll be an adventure on the way home and tomorrow will be an adventure as well I guess every day can kind of be an adventure if you're keen on it and you've got the right attitude but i'm really craving a coffee so i'm gonna get some coffee in me get some water in me and uh see you guys in a minute I can't do it. 
guys here we go I don't know what else to say at this point to be honest because it's been a bit of a it's been a bit of a, a weird experience all the way through and I don't know what it's gonna be like going on Dragon's Den but I've had an absolute blast exploring Eastern Canada this has been a crazy adventure it's only really just starting and the amount of work we put in is gonna be dwarfed by the amount of work we got to put in to keep going so uh, in less than 24 hours, we go in front of the dragons. And I'm not nervous, uh, but I do understand it's a TV show and uh, they will ask us questions to keep us on our toes to kind of get us off kilter. So I have to make sure I have my wits about me. Um, <clears throat> like I said, it's a TV show. They're not, they're not there to paint you in the best light. You hope that they do. I hope that they will. We've got a beautiful product. I think we're a couple of really decent people. And I think we got a good business model. So, Ontario, you have been a blast. Or, uh, I should say, where are we? Sudbury area. You've been a blast. <clears throat> but it's time to get going. So, we'll see you guys. Guys, we found a place to fish on the river here. It's the Pengoosby River, which is open. There's three other anglers here. And so we're gonna go grab our uh, tackle box and kit and do some fishing. Outside of Alberta, they don't exist. I'm just kidding. I've seen. I saw them rise. That's why I was fishing there. No fish this whole trip. Man, I am the worst angler. Maybe we should change the name of this channel from Blind Men Outdoors to Canada's Worst Angler. That that might be appropriate. We ate up about an hour fishing there, so. Ah oh, well. We'll get you, Tyler. We'll get you. All right, guys, so uh, I was just got off the phone with Tyler, and it seems like he is pretty far behind. Uh, his flight hasn't even left yet, which means that we'd be sitting at the airport for about two hours. So uh, his flight being as behind as it is gives us about a two-hour lull. We're only about two hours currently from the airport in Hamilton, but traffic right now on the 400, I'm just watching it build and build and build and build. And I have no interest, none whatsoever, in being on the 400 at uh, 5 o'clock on a Sunday evening when everyone's coming out from coming back south from cottage country. So we're not going to be there. We're going to take a detour route. We're going to take 93 over to 27 and then uh, up to Wasaga Beach. And then we'll head south from Wasaga Beach into Hamilton. And then we'll boogie over to uh, 
Toronto in the morning. Whoa. So we're just stopping on the side of the road here so Zeus can do his business. And uh, we're gonna plan our route that we're gonna take and we're gonna get some fuel and then maybe we can stop and fish somewhere while we wait for Tyler to get closer. So let's see where, where we can go. All right, it's the morning of. We are rested, and Lord knows I needed another shower. Uh, I'm super stoked right now. Tyler and I are on our way over to uh, Toronto from Sudbury. Uh, not Sudbury, Hamilton. Um, so we got a bit of a drive, but it's not far at all. And before we know it, we were driving through some bright and early morning Toronto traffic. Early morning Toronto traffic really isn't that bad, so I'm glad that we had an early call time but we drove through some pretty amazing places but we need to fresh the truck up a little bit and make sure that she's uh super clean before we get into the studios and hopefully and hopefully 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 nobody's going to notice the faint scent of zeus's little accident from the last episode all right guys here we are we are downtown Toronto, and uh, normally I'm like less. Normally I'm less inclined to talk in public, but there's like so many people here that I don't feel like the weird one that's talking to myself on my phone. We've got the truck just off to the side of the road here. We're told that we can sit here and wait a little bit. That's where we're going. Up, the truck is going to be loaded in that door. And I'm going to take it upstairs into. Uh, CBC and check. So there we are, guys. Probably be the first overlanders to put their truck literally in an elevator and lift it to the top floor of a building downtown in Canada's largest city. This is the biggest adventure. I think this little truck's ever been on, and it's been in some serious places, but by far, this is a really fun experience. Uh, we couldn't, I mean, just in general, getting in Toronto wasn't as bad as I thought it was. So we'll have to see what comes of it, but there's people all over the place. It's a good time. We're excited to be here. Uh, we got a couple of thumbs up on the road too, so you know what, we're feeling pretty good. But we're just gonna sit and wait for CBC get their act together and uh, away we go so let's get in the truck apparently as long as someone's in the truck they won't tow or ticket us so we're just gonna sit here and wait little, fa little fancy McGaverson look at him in his nice shoes cool
All right, guys, we're next up. <clears throat> Getting ready to. I got a mic on. Take over the world. Me too. Look at that. They're so they're, fancy. They're listening to us. They're a lot fancier than the ones that we have with the duct tape. The, the duct tape and the high class here at Dragon's Den Studios. Um, Tyler, how are you feeling? I'm feeling good. Yeah? Yeah. Confident? Just, just another day at the office. Just another day at the office, man. It's no big thing. Yeah. Ain't no big thing. A little nervous, but I think we got this. I mean, this is what we do. We're used to being in front of your guys' cameras all the time, and uh, ultimately, the audience doesn't change, really, no. at all, because we've been talking to Canada for a long time here online. So you guys already know the story, but most of Canada doesn't. So we're going to go in there, we're going to slay gonna a couple dragons, and we're just going to tell them what's yeah. going on. So we can't show you guys, though, because we're under strict, strict, very serious military-grade documents prohibiting Something us like from that, yeah. selling CBC secrets. Um, so we will only do so to the highest bidder. <laughs> Email me. Truck is in place. There's people doing pitches. They're pitch practice all the way around us. There's little rooms set up. We're in Studio 40 and uh, we're just waiting for our call. We were going to be first, but there was some finagling with the truck system. We have to pull the battery and have a full tank of gas, so we have to push it around. Um, but it's in place, and we're just waiting for the call up. So, what happens? What do you think, Tyler? Yeah, it's pretty cool in here. It is pretty cool in here. I didn't know what to expect. This is what it's, this is backstage at CBC, guys. So we're gonna <clears throat> wait for. Yeah, we're gonna hurry up and wait, and then we're gonna slice some dragons. All right, guys, that's it. Let's get out of here. Let's get out of Toronto. Um, after Dragon's Den got wrapped up, um, we were exhausted, like seriously exhausted. Um, it was a bit of a process getting in there. We waited and waited and waited. Uh, we were supposed to be first, then we were supposed to be second, then we were third, then we were fourth. Uh, so we didn't actually get out until sometime around 11 o'clock noon. Um, and so we really just wanted to beat it out of Toronto. So we, we literally A-lined it, like just B-line, sorry, we literally B-lined it. From downtown Toronto and just left. We stopped for lunch somewhere um, and then just started driving. And we literally didn't stop. We drove between me and Tyler. We swapped out uh, and literally drove straight through. The the four days that it took for us to get here, we did in like, I think it was 37 or 36, 36 hours or something like that. With a couple hours here and there for us both to stop. But I would drive and then Tyler would drive at night and then we'd swap out in the morning and yada yada. It was a really good drive, but it wasn't without its own issues, and we did run into a couple of issues. All right, Eric, I don't know if you can see this, but I'm going to try and do a video and then send it to you. So we're smelling differential fluid. That's the output shaft of the front differential right there on the passenger side. It's coming out of this seal here and then splashing up onto the transmission housing and then over here onto the catalytic converter by the bell housing. And I just wanna know if this is something that we can limp as long as we don't put it in four by four, if it will cause too much issue or if there's a workaround. Uh, I'm gonna call you right now and then send this to you. Okay, so as you can see, uh, the front differential did start leaking. Like we were a few, we were a few hours into the drive at this point. We had left Ontario, and we were just looking for a place to kind of stop. I smelled it a little bit before Ontario, and then I smelled it even more when we got. So I did pull over, take a look at it, see it. Thanks to Lyndon, uh, Mark, and Eric for pointing me in the right direction here. Um, we did end up making it all the way back, but shortly, like not even. 10 minutes after we pulled back onto the highway, this happened.
Hello? I'm calling Stephanie Stephen Elliott with the Dry Number P. reason I pulled you over today is you're going 87 in a 60 zone. Do you have your license, insurance, and registration on you? Right there. Perfect. Where are you guys heading? This is a pretty cool truck. Back to Alberta. Thank you. We just came back from Toronto. What were you doing there? Uh, filming an episode of Dragon's Den. Are you guys on the episode? Well, we don't know until it airs, but yeah, that's the general consensus. Nice. What's, what's the product you're selling? The uh, truck camper. camper. Just this kind of camper in general? Yeah. This, these campers. We build and design these in oh, okay. Alberta. So you build the whole truck then? Just no. the campers. So just the camper you just Yeah, them? yeah. We just pulled off. We got, we, I noticed a smell, so we pulled off at the inspection station to s check out the smell. And we were just getting back up. Didn't realize it was 60 until I saw the 60 sign, which is right where you were at, so. Do you guys have any business cards for your business? I got lots, yeah. You want a couple stickers, too? Sure. Oh, where do we put them, Ty? Got this on. Oh, you got them right here. There we go. Here's those. It's not quite a card, but it's a pamphlet. You know what? I'll tell you for free, you're not going to be getting a ticket today. Appreciate it. I do have to go back just to make sure that now that I have started driving stuff, just make sure that this is sure. valid. I can just check it in my car. Okay. Um, everything else is in order here, so okay. no worries. But Thanks. I'll tell you for free, you're not going to get a ticket today. Appreciate it. I'll just, uh, I just got to go do that. No, yeah, no worries, sir. man. Thanks. Seven, eight, seven. All right. I'll trade you. Found some. Oh, sweet. Know anybody looking? I appreciate it. Well, you just keep driving safe, get where you're going safe, and... Uh, Appreciate it. Thank oh, you. Good day, guys. Keep doing your doing. Good luck on your. Uh, Thanks a lot. Yeah. Decent fella. Yeah, he's fairly pleasant. <laughs> okay, so obviously, uh, the 36 hours going back home was almost more eventful than the entire trip coming out. And I don't know if that's because Tyler was with me or what, but or maybe it was just the miles we were putting down. But identified the issue with the diff. Not even a few minutes later, we get pulled over by the OPP. Um, crazy, crazy. Shout out to the, to the officer. He was super chill about it. And uh, he knew he was kind of in a weird spot and we were just getting back up to speed. Um, that being said... Uh, Awesome, awesome time. But as you guys know, it's a long drive. So we decided to pull off on the side of the road uh, and take a, just a, a breather, you know, just stretch our legs and move around for a little bit. So it took about an hour and we pulled off onto this unknown, one of the hundred lakes between Ontario and Manitoba. And uh, we're, doing, we're doing a little bit of fishing. And Tyler caught this absolutely massive brook trout. And I was just like, what? Like this guy... <laughs> I have been fishing all the way through and Tyler comes and not only did he get the first fish of the entire trip on his way back and he had only been like this hit for Tyler it was like a two three day trip max um, but he caught the biggest brook trout I've ever seen and so then I was in it now I was like okay I got to catch a fish here so I rigged up a jig head with a fake minnow and I went around Tyler and I cast it at this log and I got my PB trout my PB trout, my PB brook trout, and the first fish I've ever caught outside of Alberta. Hey, look at me, man, what I've become. Something. I've been running knees, looking for something, digging deep since now. Oh, yeah. What I found. Another beauty. So straight up guys, I know the video quality on this fish is terrible uh, because I had, like I said, I had been fishing all freaking week and I hadn't caught a damn thing. So I was so sick and tired of putting the chest, the GoPro on and then continuing on and keep going and going. And I really wasn't expecting to catch a fish and I just got super excited once Tyler did. So once I hooked up to this guy, I was trying my best to get the shot, but just wait, it's worth it. This fish is, I did, I didn't take a measurement on camera, um, but it is a master angler uh, qualifier. Like it's, it was, I think it was 24, 
24 inches or something like that. It was it, it whatever that is. It was it was a qualifying rough drill for sure. No bloody way. That thing is huge! Oh my god! What a chunky monkey! Come here, you! Oh, dude, this thing is so big! Okay, okay. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, okay. <laughs> Look at the size of that thing, guys. Oh. It's absolutely oh. enormous. Want a picture? Oh. So that's uh, the first fish I caught this trip. And I caught it after Tyler caught another big brook trout over there. It was fat. And I caught it on the first, that's the first catch on the new uh, Microlite. The new, uh, what's, this is the Shakespeare uh, micro series with the Daiwa 2000 series on it and that thing was oh big so cool and then we also got that on the uh, Excalibur minnow with the red tail and the 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 high-vis fish and Tyler got the same thing just on a different jig and that was right along where that that uh, tree is it was just bobbing up and down there as soon as it hit bottom bam it took it so we're gonna we're gonna cast a couple more times and then we'll probably have to hit the road because we've been here for like an hour already. <laughs> so with with the the insanely awesome return trip wrapping up, we were uh, heading into the last long night of traveling as the sun sets there. Uh, we were gonna be making the push all the way back into Alberta. Um, thanks to everybody for following us, uh, both my, myself and Tyler, appreciate you guys uh, a lot. And uh, last thing and the most important thing is just to remind you guys to live free, be wild, and I hope to see you guys on the next episode.